suicide is really a big thing on all reservations. So then people, you know, when they talk about this, somebody might say something like, well, we got to get back to the old ways. Then Indians, us Indian people will stop thinking like white people. Okay, now uh, let me tear that apart there, that argument. So what that person is saying is that the reason Indians are committing suicide is because of white people? So this, are, so are you saying that suicide is the white man's way? Is that what you're saying? If that's the white man's way, how come there's so many of them? <laughs> I don't think suicide's the white man's way. Because if it was, there, there'd be no white people. They don't, they all kill themselves. And they're not doing that. Yeah, it's. Uh, you can argue against my argument as, as all you want, but the fact is, suicide is not a white people's problem. Suicide existed among Indians too. Before white people came, let me give you a couple of examples. There is a story that really gets misunderstood. Um, there was, a, I think his name is High Hawk. There was a, a long, long time ago. It's a Lakota guy. His name was High Hawk. And I think that's his name. Yeah, I have to. I, I'm, I'm not too sure, but let's. I'll just call him that for now. And uh, he, he went off to battle against the Crow Indians. You see, there's duality right there. Indians fighting Indians just because they speak a different language. They look different. They wear their hair different. They're suspicious of each other. That is duality. That shows you not all Indians are the same. As long as we're thinking in a dualistic way, we're going to find a way to separate ourselves all the time from others, and we're going to call the others wrong. That's how duality works, as I said earlier. So, anyway, this, this Lakota group went off to battle a Crow Indian group. And the Lakota group got beat pretty bad. And when they brought High Hawk back, uh, he was dead. So his wife really went uh, nuts. yeah, And, and uh, she started, uh, uh, you know, she was over overcome with uh, sadness. And she was crying and crying, and, and then suddenly she stopped crying. She just sat still for a while. She started to sing a song. People thought she was singing a song to honor her husband. She stood up, and she went, went out of her teepee, and she started dancing a slow dance. But the thing is, she was dancing backwards. This is already a signal. If you know Lakota uh, ideology, uh, uh, Lakota symbols. Uh, this is this means something. Dancing backwards, okay. And that doesn't have anything to do with Heoka. Okay, this is something different. So she stood up. I mean, she was outside the teepee. And now she's starting to dance backwards, slowly. Yeah, she's doing slow. Uh, walk slowly, dancing backwards as she's singing the song, and she has her eyes closed and her arms down, and she's singing like that. And uh, people are one, one, uh, they don't, the, nobody's saying anything because uh, they don't know what to say. Yeah, they they follow her, and then they realize she's she's going on top of a hill. And at the uh, top of the on, on the on the other side of this hill is a long, long, a steep cliff, like straight down. And it's really a a long fall, yeah. So when she got to the edge, she stopped singing and she threw herself off. She jumped back, yeah. And she pushed herself off. She intended to do that, and then she she uh, landed on the ground and all broken. Uh, she killed herself. Now, a lot of a lot of Lakota people, they don't want to admit that that, that that was suicide. 
Instead, what you hear Lakota people say today is they say, see, that's how strong she loved her man, that she did, couldn't live without him. And so she wanted to join him in death so they could journey together in the spirit world. Total bullshit. That is 100 million percent bullshit. That totally, 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 totally goes against Lakota custom. That's not how it's done. Because then you could say if, you're, if your child dies and may, then you miss your child, then, well, hey, the child is going to a nice place. So, hey, let's all kill ourselves and join the child. Why are we even born in the first place, God damn it? Let's just all kill ourselves so we can all get to heaven faster. <laughs> Do you see what, that, what I mean? That, that's, that's totally nonsensical. She committed suicide because she was overcome. She wasn't thinking. She went into a deep depression really fast. And she was not thinking. This is not love. This is mental illness. Yeah? Something inside of her snapped. In her mind, it snapped. And, and, uh, and, she, and she did this. Because in the Lakota way, when your partner dies, it doesn't matter how they die, whether it's in battle or illness or old age or whatever. It, there's a way you deal with that. But it means you live. It's part of life. Mourning and grieving is a part of life. And we all will do that at some point. Yeah. So, um, what she did was uh, was a sign of uh, mental illness. Yeah. She she went crazy. This is not a love story. This is a sad story. Yeah, that that was not love. Absolutely not. If you want to look at it in those terms. It was love addiction. And love addiction is not love. Some people call it pseudo-love, yeah? fake love. It, 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 it appears like love, but it makes people do no good things where they normally would not do those things. And they do them anyway because you know they think they're in love. They don't want to lose that person, so they'll do anything to keep that person. That is not love. That's love addiction. That's that's an illness. Yeah, that is an illness. And that can lead to a mental illness too. This is uh this shows you we had these diseases before the white people came. That we had mental illness among all Indian people way before white people even got the idea to come this way. Another one. This happened to Crazy Horse's mother. Crazy Horse's mother was not Oglala. His father was Oglala, but his mother was not. His mother was Hohoju, Lakota. And books, they incorrectly call that group Minikanju. But that's incorrect. They live on the Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation today, on the southwest corner of the Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation. It's the Hohoju Lakota people. This is where Crazy Horse's mother is from. And she married this guy from Pine Ridge. And uh, soon after they got married, he, he tr started treating her mean. He was abusive. As soon as it became springtime, his mother would take Crazy Horse and they would go back to her people. So all spring and summer and fall, they stayed with the Hohoju people. So Crazy Horse grew up with the Hohoju people. He didn't grow up among Pine Ridge Indians. He considered himself Hohoju from his mother's side. His mother loved him. His mother took care of him. That's where he grew up. So then one time Crazy Horse's father went to go visit them. He was all 
bring nice and he brought food for her family and he was really trying to sweet talk her to coming back to Pine Ridge so uh, she thought about it and she said okay he's being really nice yeah crazy horse's dad he was really being nice so they went back to uh, Pine Ridge people and he was nice for a few days then suddenly he was gone nobody knew where he went and uh, one thing is that Crazy Horse's father was known for his selfishness he was lazy and selfish he was not a mighty warrior and he would disappear from time to time and so now he's gone nobody knew where he went and here uh, finally after I don't know, maybe two weeks went by. He showed up, and he had another woman with him. So he brought the woman into uh, the teepee, their home, and he said to his wife, this is uh, my new wife, he said. This is your sister wife. She's going to be living with us. And so all the people in the community were really shocked. And so Crazy Horse's mother really got angry. Yeah, she got angry and she was sad at the same time because here he was really acting all nice to her and stuff like that. And for a few days he was a perfect husband and all of a sudden he's gone for two weeks and now he's back with another woman. So she ran out of the teepee. Nobody knew where she was running to. And Crazy Horse didn't know what to do. He was just a little boy. So then they brought his father before the council because his father broke rules the teepee belongs to the wife whatever the wife says is the law so when you're married if you want to bring something inside the teepee you have to ask your wife first you don't just bring it in no matter what it is you have to say come out here your honey take a look at this what do you think would you like to keep this in your teepee? And if she says, yeah, then you can take it in. But you just don't take it in. He violated his wife bringing uh, another woman in. It's a really bad violation. See, this is the kind of man Crazy Horse's father was. He's, he's not, not honorable. That shows you there was selfishness among Indian people. We were not perfect back then. We had problems just like any other people all over the world. We had our assholes too, just like any other nation. The next thing is that, and I have to explain something. In Lakota tradition, when humans first came on the earth, they were observing the buffalo. And they noticed how the buffalo organized themselves, that they... It's really a cool way, yeah, how they organize themselves. And and they, they saw that that really is nice and that works. So the Lakota people said, let's organize ourselves like that too. So they said, okay. And that's a teoshpai. A teoshpai is like this. Your mother and all her sisters are your mothers. All of those ladies are your mothers. The Their husbands are your fathers. And the children from those people are your brothers and sisters. Okay? Now, your mother's brothers, those are your uncles. They can't be fathers because that'd be incest. Yeah? So they're your uncles. And their wives are your aunties and the children from those people are your cousins. Well, that's your mom's side. Your father and his brothers are your other fathers. Their wives are your other mothers, and the children from there are your other brothers and sisters. You see, you got a lot of moms and dads on both sides of the family. Yeah? Your father's sisters are your aunties, and their husbands are your uncles, and the children from those marriages are your cousins. That's how that works. So you have all these adults that are responsible for all the children. So the, the community raises the children. Since you're a little baby, since you can start learning, 
you learn to become community minded and you see how beneficial it is you see the fruits of community activity that everybody benefits and it makes everybody feel good and you enjoy contributing to that so you think like a community because see you're raised like this since you're a baby so you see Crazy Horse's father being selfish that shows you that he was really not a good man he was not a man of honor okay now the other thing is that women outlive men so a rule was made a long time ago that when an old woman when her husband dies that if her sister still has a husband that if all parties agree the widow can move in with her sister and her sister's husband but there's no sex involved this is not about romance you have to realize that Lakota perspective is different than English. So when you say one word in English, and you know what that means, but when you look at the Lakota equivalent, it might have a slightly additional meaning. In English, a modern marriage system was created by a man, and originally it was to own the wife. It was not a mutual thing. It was an ownership thing. In the Lakota world, it's not that way. Yeah, It's not that way. Nobody owns anybody. When the man is not being a good husband or, you know, she just puts his stuff outside the teepee door and that's it. Everybody knows he's out. And there's nothing he can do about it. It's not a big deal. So it's it's seen differently. Marriage is not the same in the Lakota uh, perspective as it is in the dualistic perspective. None of this till death do us part. Uh, That that doesn't make sense because people can change. And somebody might change for the worse. Then it's over. So they have to split. But remember, the kids have a lot of mothers and a lot of fathers. So they're they're never going to be... There's no such thing as a broken home in the Lakota ancient society. And there's no such thing as an orphan either. So anyway, getting back to this uh, th- a marriage thing, this was only only old people were allowed to do this because it w- didn't have anything to do with romance and it didn't have anything to do with sex. Okay? It was about taking care of each other, helping each other. So lots of times that happened. The man would, uh, his sister-in-law, maybe her husband died or maybe she never got married yeah, and uh, she's alone, so she can stay with him. But it has to be okay with all three, the sister, the wife, and the husband. It has to be okay with all three. So the husband will then take care of this, this other woman too. Her sister will give her a place in a teepee and stuff like that. So, And they get along because this is not about sex. And the other lady may help the, the first wife, you could say, with uh, things that maybe she might have had difficulty with in the past. See how that works? And they grow fond of each other in a a familial way. They really, really have a true unconditional love for one another. But this is not romance. So that only was granted to old people to do these kind of things. So when Crazy Horse's father took a second wife. See, he violated that because he was only in his 20s. He was not an old man. And he took a second wife for sexual reasons. Another violation. So you see, this guy was really a no good guy. It shows you, not all Indians are good. So then, the council told that lady to get out of there and go back to where she came from. They told Crazy Horse's father, never do that again or we banish you. Then they went looking for Crazy Horse's mother. 
and they found her. She committed suicide. She was overcome, and uh, something snapped. Living like this put her in a depression, and she committed suicide. Crazy Horse's father was seen as a fool. Overall, he, he was known as a man you cannot trust. So these are things that happened in the Lakota world. Suicide did exist in the Lakota world. This is not a white people thing. So all you Indian racists out there, get that through your head. This is not a white man thing. It existed even among Indian people. Mental illness existed among Indian people long before the white people came here. Because we had a ceremony for it. When you're looking at that problem on the reservation of suicide, it's really bad today. The, The suicide rate is really high on the reservations. It's really becoming a problem. Teenagers are doing it, young people, older people. Its uh, mental illness is really has a strong hold on the reservation. And uh, a lot of these Indian racists are saying uh, it's all because of the white man. No, it's not. It's because of duality. And duality is not a white man thing. The duality was over here way before white people got the idea that mm, maybe the earth is not flat. Dualism was among Indian people long, long time ago. It always was here. Why do you think we had these rules? If if duality wasn't among Indians, we wouldn't need all these rules that our culture has. They would be natural things, but it's not that way. So, when I think about you know these Indian racists when they talk like this and they and they say. Get all the white people off the reservation. We can fix our own problems. Even if you did get the white people off the reservations, we're going to attack each other. We're going to start saying, well, you're you're not a full blood, so you shouldn't be talking like that. See, now they're going to be separating themselves. Then the next thing they're going to say is they're, they're going to say, we need to get all the, the, the uh, mixed bloods off the reservation. That's the next thing they're going to say. Okay, now let's say we did that. Let's say on all the reservations, we got rid of the white people and all the mixed bloods. Okay, let's say that. Just pretend. And now, on all reservations, there's nothing but full bloods there. And do you think it's going to be all happy, happy, joy, joy? No. Because remember, the duality is still, that pattern is still there. Next, they're going to start looking for a way to separate themselves from each other. So some full bloods are going to say, well, you guys can't talk Indian. So, okay, now all the full bloods who can't talk Indian have to leave the reservation now. See, they're still finding a way to separate themselves. So let's let's go that far, okay? Let's Let's pretend, okay, now the white people are off the reservation, the mixed bloods are off the reservation, and now let's say the full bloods who cannot speak Lakota are now kicked off the reservation too. So the only people that are on the reservations are full blood Lakota people who can speak Lakota. Okay, now do you think it's going to be fixed now? No. They're still dualistic thinking. So they're going to find a new way to separate themselves from others. What do you think that's going to be? How they define certain words, probably. Some people are probably going to say, okay, when we pray, the ancestors never say Tungashila. So whoever says Tungashila in their prayers have to be kicked off the reservation because that's alluding to a Christian one God concept and that's not the original way of praying. They said something different a long time ago. Okay, so let's get rid of those Indians who be- who believe in the one God concept. Okay, so we get them off the reservation. Next. Now, how do you think they're going to divide each other next? 
They're going to find a way. As long as they think in this dualistic way, they're always going to find a way to separate themselves from each other. Always, until it comes to the point where they destroy each other. Then there's no more Indians. That's what duality does. That's why it's like a disease. But this disease you cannot wipe out. So you have to learn it. You have to learn how to manage it. In some situations you can transform it into something that works. That's something that's healthy. By when you add another perspective or something like that. Add another perspective so you take away the good versus evil perspective. For example, it's not the color of somebody's skin that's important. And it does not matter if you're a full blood or not. That doesn't matter. What matters is how you live your life. And that doesn't have a damn thing to do with skin color. It involves your sacred center. This has no race. It has no blood quantum. Yeah, it has no no culture. This is what we all have. This is what makes us human. This is what makes us ikche. This is what connects all of us to each other, no matter what color our skin is, no matter what language we speak, no matter what culture we come from. You're going to find good and bad wherever you go. You will find nice people and not nice people in every skin color, in every group. So it's it's not your skin color. It's not how much Indian blood you have. It's not how you look or how many things you know. That's not important. What's important is how do you live your life.